Hey guys, Vince here. This is just a uh, quick little follow-up on my experiment. Um, what I've been trying to do is figure out a way to get a triggering system that uh, that would work without using uh, Hall effect sensors, um, IR sensors, or read switches. Okay. Uh, the reason I don't want to use these is because using these is uh, dependent upon my ability to position it precisely over top of a spinning magnet and that spinning magnet to be precisely positioned when I want this to trigger over a coil. Uh, too much room for human error in my opinion. I've experimented with lots of things using transistors and PNPs and NPNs and capacitors and not, it just gets too complicated. I want to build this so that anybody should be able to figure this out. And to that, I got the idea that it should be possible to create a trigger out of a coil. And I'm going to show you exactly why. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to detach that coil. I'm going to show you the, um, the oscilloscope here, which I will power up, turn around a little bit, Let's see if you can see that, all right, all right, we'll let that juice up, I'm going to attach just moving this out of the way, I'll put these away, So what we're going to do here is we're going to take uh, this coil and we're just going to connect it to the oscilloscope. There's nothing else there. Just a hollow um, 18 gauge roll of wire wrapped with some electrical tape. And that's it. Okay, so we're going to attach this so we can see what is it that we see when a magnet passes over a coil. And this is what got me thinking, well, this should be possible. I don't know why. I've never, ever seen it done. Uh, aim that down a touch. And so you can see that there's nothing happening there yet. Well, if I take a magnet and I move it over, you should be able to see a little bit of a ripple there. Of course, the ripple becomes more um, exaggerated with speed and precision. So... What we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of cutting board. It's a very thin, like less than a one-eighth stiff, plasticky cutting board. Chopping your salads on, whatever. And I just lay that over top of the coil. And uh, it doesn't matter. This is a N35 magnet. This is uh, 30 millimeters across the top. That's about an inch. And it's about 20 millimeters in diameter. So it's, it's about three quarters of an inch that way. And it's going to run this across the top of the plastic and the coil, and then we'll see what we see here. But I'm going to set this to single stage mode, so we capture one instance, and let's see what we see. So, what we got is a little swoopy line. I'll bring you up there. <clears throat> so what that is, is that's a waveform that occurs when a magnet passes over a coil. You can see my setup here. It's just uh, the oscilloscope wire right up there, just attached to either end of this coil. And so the reason that we get that particular signal is because regardless of which way this is oriented, north, south, south, north, it doesn't matter. When the magnet enters here, it pushes the voltage in one direction or another. When it gets to this point, it goes back to zero. Whoops. There's a something magnetic under there, obviously. When it gets to this point, it starts pushing it in the opposite direction. So we create, um, let's say it was going in this way, it was going positive, so uh, positive, into the center, back to zero, and then out this way, it goes down below zero to negative, and then root on the back side of this, as a magnet exits the coil, it goes back to zero. So uh, it's reverse here, actually, what we got is it goes down as I approach the magnet and then back to zero as it's in the center 
and then as it exits the coil, it goes out this way and then back down to zero. So we're creating a trigger switch here basically. And I was sure that that was possible. The next thing I wanted to know was, is it possible to use that to trigger that? And this is a solid state relay. I've been trying to do this with things like, um, uh, capa uh, not capacitors, but uh, transistors, and uh, well, in combination with capacitors and a whole bunch of ideas here to capture back EMF, but it just, nothing was working. But I went back to my original um, uh, sort of over unity uh, motor that I was working on. <clears throat> it it kind of worked, but it wasn't big enough to do what I wanted to do. Uh, and it was too complicated. So we're going back to the basics here, but I am going back to this guy. So this is a, uh, can push 25 amps, uh, a DD version, which means this receives um, a DC voltage for the trigger input. And that light will go on whenever it triggers. And it can handle um, between 5 and 200 volts DC on the output. So these lines are connected to this power source here, which is set to about 20 milliamps right now at about 1.8 volts. And this is what's necessary in order to get that LED to flash. Mm, pretty close. 1.7 would be necessary. Uh, so it's a little bit over, but it's about the right amperage. And these two guys are blocked as an open switch if this is not triggering. So the trigger is turned on and allows this to close, which allows power to flow between these two guys and power through here, da da da, and then through all this. So it creates a circle. Um, and if that goes off, then that means that building a better version of this guy is possible where we're triggering, we're sending pulses of electricity through coils, not this one, but other coils that are mounted to the wheel that are not part of the triggering system, but are part of the pulsing system. So we're not trying to create over unity, we're trying to create an incredibly efficient pulse motor generator, which is um, uh, high in energy conversion, okay? Uh, what our goal is after that is off the back end here, you can see there's an axle. Well, I'm gonna stick an axle flux generator to it. And then we're going to see what kind of energy we can generate with that. Um, whether it's, it, it should, it'll probably be um, alternating current, which means we'll have to use uh, one of these guys. I totally lose me. I, I just can't remember what it's called. Um, a rectifier. Yes, rectifier. To rectify it from eight alternating current back into a DC current. Um, or we can just buy an MPPT controller and take whatever we can get off of that guy or one that we're going to build like that and then dump it straight into um, a set of batteries or capacitors, whatever we want. And then you would need um, something to draw it out in order to use it in your house to create a 110 volts or 240 volts for your house or whatever. But that's that's not my problem. The, this has been my problem. Let's get this to, to work. So I'm gonna set you back down and let's try to go through this. Let's see if we can give you a live demo. One sec. All right, so first I'm going to show you what that coil looks like when it's connected, when this is connected um, to the oscilloscope, but sitting underneath this guy as it spins. So we're going to take it out of single mode. So now it's back in regular run mode, I, I believe. I'm going to place this directly under here. It doesn't have to be fancy. I think the wire is going to stick up a little bit here. I'll put this magnet away and uh, hopefully you can see that. Let's just see. We're going to give it a simple spin. Yes. So <clears throat> it's generating uh, a minor waveform. So it's on stop right now. So we're going to let that run. Yes. So we have a waveform there. And that waveform changes its shape and intensity by how strong these magnets are, how big the magnets are, how big the coil is, what kind of gauge wire you're running, yada yada yada, and how fast the whole damn kit and caboodle's running. So let's stop it and give it a good tug. All right, so we're actually generating something that is uh, 17 volts positive, 17 volts negative, so that's 34 volts peak to peak. I've gotten it as high as 42 volts peak to peak. Um, 
What that's generating for amperage, I don't know because that's based on how large the coil is, the thickness of the wire, the length of the wire, da 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 da. I have some formulas, I can work all that out and find out exactly what it's generating. But the only thing that's relevant here is, is that going to generate enough energy to cause this trigger to go on and off? Because that's all I need. Now, it's actually separated. This trigger, if it connects and that light goes off, it sends an, an IR over to this side. So there's no wires between these two sides. This side tells this side to go on and off because it has a blinking light. That blinking light is detected by this side. And when this side detects that blinking light, it allows the power to flow between these two guys. So that's a solid state relay. So we're gonna detach that now and attach the white cords to this guy and see if we can get this sucker to blink. So we can turn Turn that off. <clears throat> Push him back because it's cold and it's winter here in Canada. I like to keep a little bit of cloth close to it and just helps take any moisture off of it out of the air. All right, so I'm just really angle this guy back down here. You can see what I'm kind of doing. Okay, so then, we don't have a blinking light here right now because we're not generating enough voltage or, or rather probably not enough amperage for this to go off. This says it works between 3 and 32 volts. How much amperage that requires, I can't really recall, but I did test it to see what kind of amperage and voltage it, minimum it requires in order for that light to go on and off, and it was 20 millivolts. 20 milliamps at about 0.8 volts. So it's actually much, much lower for this particular um, solid state relay than is specified um, here in the description. So that was great. But this thing's temperamental because I haven't got anything soldered here. They're all open wires and it's, uh, it's a crapshoot. So the way we do it is we just give it a good tug and she's not going off. And that means it's not well connected. So I'm going to do this. We're going to turn this off as well. And uh, that way it'll be easier to see when lights start flashing, hopefully. Uh, by the way, when this trigger starts flashing, that means it's sending a signal to this side saying you can start going on and off, which means that LED should also be flashing. So they should almost be simpatico. In synchronous. Oh, not connecting. Yeah, you can see my triggering. See, I would have to tap this at exactly the right moment, but it's um, she's being annoying. She's being a bad boy, bad girl. There you go, and that is that, Jack. You can see it's triggering and it's pulsing. This power is coming from these lines which are connected to the power supply. Okay, it has nothing to do with this power. This power is being generated by that coil spinning, um, or these magnets spinning over top of that coil. So, super exciting. It's gone off now because the voltage has dropped as it starts to decrease its speed, but that won't be an issue when we get the whole system connected up because the moment we're able to start sending a pulse here with these guys, that pulse into the coils is gonna tell those magnets to spin faster and hopefully faster and faster up to about the speed of about 500 RPM or so, 500, 600, 700, I don't know. I have no idea yet, but success. This will work and I've never ever seen it done before. I've never seen anybody suggest it before. I just don't understand why it's not a thing, so. Maybe this is the first video you'll ever see that's, that's using this as well. At any rate, I'm going to sign off and uh, wish me luck on the next stage here. I've, I've done some SketchUp drawings of the, the device that's going to hold this whole thing, but now I have to redo all of them because this is going to cause me to have to do it in a slightly different way. Um, uh, a few of the different wheels and so forth because I want to make this as wind resistant as possible, though I can't make it a, an airtight chamber. Um, we'll see what we can do because 
I really, really want to make this as simple as possible for anybody to be able to build. Um, if it's going to work, then I want anybody to be able to build it. I don't want to have a whole bunch of complicated, you know, circuit boards and all this other stuff that you got to get from China, which you might not be able to do right now or who knows, even in the future, maybe the cost would just be too much. But, I mean, even though it's cheap and you can tear apart a VCR and get a lot of that stuff, I mean, there's no guarantees anything's going to wind up working. But this is generally pretty, pretty, pretty simple stuff, you know, four leads and a bunch of strong magnets, and it's gonna cost you some money for the copper. By the way, Sheldon, thank you again so much for the copper. This is one of the original ones that we have, is 18 gauge wire. Um, <clears throat> but we have the 28 gauge wire, which uh, looks like uh, sort, of, sort of this stuff. Turn on the light. That was the second bunch of wire that she had purchased for me. That's 28 gauge, and it's smaller and thinner than this 28 gauge, but there's a question there. Which one should we be using? Well, I don't know. But there's, uh, there's two coils stacked on top of each other here. One acts as a trigger, one acts as a pulse. But I figured, you know what, I'm not sure I want to go with that idea because we could be turning this into a bit of a, a transformer. And uh, I don't want to create a transformer. I want to create a pulse motor. Maybe a transformer would work. I'm not sure if that's what it would really do, but I, whatever. Lots to learn. Anyway, wish me luck, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.